Fatma Liz. It was really important to me to have a Venezuelan voice in this conversation. NBC News reports, quote, since 2014, over 6.8 million Venezuelan refugees and migrants have fled to other countries, causing one of the largest refugee crises in the world. What do Americans need to know about these migrants and the country they're leaving behind? Well, Alicia, really that this has been building up over the course of the last 23 years. You know, I remember growing up in South Florida in the 90s and my family was among the only Venezuelans in our community. Venezuela was the richest country in Latin America, itself a haven for refugees seeking political and economic turmoil in Europe, in the Middle East, in Latin America. And now with the election of Chavez in 99 and his hand-picked successor Maduro, we've seen people flee first because of political opposition in the early and late 90s, then because of political persecution in the 2000s. And now that has really bottled up and become a crisis of economic and educational, a health crisis with lack of opportunity for that huge number that you just cited, 6.8 million Venezuelans. Just this past week, the UN Refugee Agency said that the Venezuelan migrant and refugee crisis was as big as the Ukrainian crisis. The difference is that we don't have a war in Venezuela. And so that is what the people of my family's country are fleeing. And so many of those people are seeking not just a better opportunity, but to work hard here, not just in South Florida, that has the largest population of Venezuelans in the United States, but again, in neighboring countries uh, all over the world. And so when we see what is happening and we see the cruel treatment of so many people that tell the story of South Florida, that same South Florida that uh, the governor of this state panders to, it's really quite a contrast to the votes that he's seeking to get and the reality that uh, my family and so many others have been fleeing from Venezuela these past several decades. Well, Crush, to that last point, a new MSNBC opinion column reads, quote, in his immigration policies and statements, Reagan led with the dignity of human life, followed by a practical recognition of the significant economic benefits of renewing the labor force from abroad. For today's Republican governors, migrants are simply pawns in a greater game of scoring points against the libs. I wonder, Krish, as someone who has watched a lot of this unfold, different times, different points in history, how you make what you make of these MAGA Republicans weaponizing immigration. It's shocking. And I think that the, you know, President Reagan would perhaps look at what we're seeing in terms of the grandstanding and be horrified because he always articulated well, even in his last speech as president, he highlighted how immigration is not just who we are as a nation, it's the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. And so at a time when we have 11.2 million jobs that are going unfilled, that Americans rightfully are complaining about inflation, this is the price we pay for xenophobic policies. And I think that's where Americans have to understand that using vulnerable people who are fleeing for their lives, who are doing what any parent would do to protect their children, to use them as political pinballs to score points and to fundraise off of is unacceptable. It's un-American.